Hi, this is Marquis e. Crew, and we are Post Inspire Altrix 18, and I am answering a question about regular expressions in the Altrix community, and would like to share my solution path with you, and hope that you subscribe to my YouTube channel in return for this uh, wisdom that I'm about to impart on you. The question that was raised was, I've got input data where I've got an account name, and inside that account name, I want to extract an ID, which in this case is the 1 or the 2 or the 22 from the account name, which may or may not be present. So any number that occurs before a dash sign, um, I need to extract that as this ACID and the example data that they've got this is what they're looking for on output. I'm going to use a crew macro to be able to test did I get the right answer. And the way the crew macro expect equals works is that you get these horrible error messages when things don't match. And when they do match, you get no message about the failure. So um, my input data I know doesn't match, and what I'm going to do is take a look at this. And first things first in pattern matching, let's let's figure out what is it that I'm trying to accomplish. So if the pattern matches, then I want to go and get the ACID, else assign blank. Well, what's my pattern? Well, the pattern is I've got a start of a field that has some digits, followed by a dash, followed by anything else. And so um, if I match that pattern, then I'm going to extract that first set of data, the digits. If I don't match, then I'm going to put blank in there. So I've got no regular expression here. I do want to point out that I am using an extra tool that you can't see. It's my own memory. Um, and in my memory, I know a lot of these uh, uh, syntactical uh, characters and how to go and find digits in the beginning of a line and the end of a line. These things are things that I know about and so you'll probably have to look them up. Maybe you'll see them in another YouTube video of mine. Um, so I'm going to use a formula tool and I'm going to add a column and the column will be AC uh, dash ID, and I chose that column name because that's what they're expecting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in regex, and I can go and select the regex match. And the string that is going to be searched in this match is account names. The pattern uh, in the formula, we're going to go and and close that in double quotes. And now we're going to start building a pattern. So what I could use is that caret symbol. I have to find that on my keyboard. The caret symbol says the start of the field is followed by digits and there could be one or many digits and then it's followed by a dash followed by anything else. <clears throat> and the result to that was um, negative one. If I change that dash to a slash dash or keep the dash itself as that, I'm seeing this negative one. I don't know what negative one means, so let's hit play. And here we can see, oh, negative one must be what I'm looking at. That is a match. So zero is false and negative one is true. I now know that about my regex match. So I have found that expression that matches this data. So I'm going to put in here an if statement. If the regex match then happy 
else tick tick for blank and then end if and now when I go and I do this and run I see happy here so I'm very happy I hope you're happy too but that's not what they wanted they wanted to actually get that formula so if the pad turn matches then instead of being happy we need to get the ACID so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put an expression regex replace and it's the account name and my pattern is uh, I could actually copy this from above is the same thing, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it a group. I want this group of digits that exist before the dash sign. And my replacement is going to be my first group. So this dollar sign one is the first group. Maybe there were multiple groups that are going to be uh, captured in the expression. But uh, here, this dollar sign one refers to anything that's inside of this grouping. I can see the data preview is now showing the value of one instead of happy, where that one is this one in the account names data. I press play. And I get ACID 1, 2, 7, 8, 12, 18, 22, 16. Things are looking pretty awesome. Now, the account name itself, I need to go and make that account name work. And when I'm doing that, I'm sorry about these phones ringing. Um, when I want to go and calculate the account name, I'm going to use another formula where I'm going to um, take this formula here and copy it, and I'm going to update the account names. And I'm going to do a regex replace and what I'm going to do is put the grouping here of everything that follows that dash. And I'm going to hit play. Look at my data. My account names are now updated. I do see some trailing spaces that exist in the account names. And I'm going to trim this data to remove the trailing spaces and hit play. Now the names are looking pretty good. Now in the original data that they're looking for, um, they actually have those account names with the trim in it. So I guess I created a little bit of extra work for myself here. I still like my result. So I did want to show you that because if I see those red marks in my data, I'm inclined to getting rid of them. Um, I'm going to put a select tool onto the uh, palette. Uh, I'm sorry, onto the canvas. I'm going to right click ACID and push that up to being the first field. And now I'm going to connect to the actual and hit play and um, John Inc. is not matching and John Inc. S and John Inc. in my data I've got John Inc. and John Inc. S. Um, I think that this is at this point just a matter that the desired results he had some typos that it didn't match back to this original data um, um, 
<laughs> I'm taking a look at this with you. This is real time trying to figure this out. John Inc. with a trailing space and John Inc. S. I'm going to um, fix the data and take the account names and I'm going to trim account names. And I'm going to put that function back in here and see if I can go and make this match. And I'm seeing row 9 expected actual and row 10 expected actual. So let's go and see. I've got 10 rows and 10 rows of data. The E data, this in his data, uh, the ACID has trimmed data. So ACID, the question itself was a trick question. quickly you know running into these problems every once in a while it's kind of expected don't worry about it and with those few extra changes that I had to put in there I hope I didn't lose too many of you uh, the expect equals now works out that with the desired results when we clean up the desired results I can clean up my data and I can get that desired result. Again, uh, my solution approach, I first went after the account ID, then I went and I fixed and I pulled out that uh, account names. Uh, don't necessarily uh, try to get everything done with one formula. Sometimes it's easier to understand what you're doing with multiple formulas. Uh, I did something different for account ID and then account names. Many ways to solve the problem, but in order to actually solve this problem, you have to sometimes correct the user's desired results. It's, it's, it's a process. I appreciate you watching this video. Uh, it's uh, hopefully been a good use of your time. Please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would appreciate that. 13 minutes and we solve two problems. Thank you.